GTM Podcast Buddhist Knowledge Series 38 Blessing of Life Episode 21 Blessing 3 Part 2 Expressing Respect and Its Purpose From the previous episode, we learned of how expressing respect to those worthy of respect come into our view as a blessing in life. And today, we will learn of how expressing respect and its purpose. So this way we can learn from the wise and improve our spiritual development. If you ask yourself what you automatically do when you have a hero in your heart, on analysis, you find that you devote all your waking thoughts to them. You put that picture in the wall. When we speak about them, we only speak praise of them. We take every opportunity to learn their opinions and share them. Given the opportunity, we try to meet with them and imitate what they do in their lives. Some people even go to the lengths of dressing like them. All these are random components of an attitude we call respect. Many of the behaviors are ways of paying respect or expressing respect. What do we mean by respect? Respect means the attitude of looking for positive aspect of a person or an object and the effort to instill oneself with those same virtues. Such respect in context of the 38 blessing of life is for the aim of further one's spiritual development. It must not have any ulterior motive. It mustn't be like the judo player who raised someone up in his own self-esteem by flattering them, only to drop him down onto the floor more easily. Some bosses blindly believe their subordinates flatterly is respect to the extent that they overlook the real state of affairs and end up getting fired. This latter case of expressing respect does not come from a mind of pure innocence which expects or demands nothing material in return. True respect arises in response to someone's virtues something else which may look like respect but which is in fact an imposter is the intention to help someone in expectation of gaining something material in return. First comes the flattery, then comes the unrefutable request for this or that favor. Boyfriend praised girlfriend saying how pretty she is because he wants her to love him. He has an ulterior motive to get something in return. He is not interested per se in either her goodness or her prettiness. What do we mean by expressing respect? Expressing respect means any polite intentional action towards someone or something, both in their presence or behind their back. That is the device that demonstrates that one is really recollecting the virtues of that person or thing. Purpose of Respect The reason behind paying homage to those worthy of homage is an extension of the reason for associating with the wise. We have already said that we associating with the wise in the hope that they will help us to develop accurate discretion in things concerning virtue. It is to help us overcome the weakness in our makeup that we tend to easily to forget all the good and valuable things taught to us by our teachers and master and parents or the monastic community, the Lord Buddha or from books we read. When you are taught how to meditate for half an hour per day or to do any other good deeds, however, your memory doesn't seem to be so reliable. The first day, you sit for meditation for exactly half an hour, no more, no less. On the second day, you sit only for 15 minutes. Well, that's better than nothing. On the third day, you think that while you are chanting is actually sort of meditation. So five minutes of true meditation is enough. On the fourth day, it is especially humid. So you think that chanting is enough. No meditation today. After all, thousands of other people don't meditate and they seem no worse off for it. By the fifth day, 
you have entirely forgotten how to meditate for half an hour. It is for the reason that doing good deeds is so easy to forget. That is the real reason for the need to pay homage. On the contrary, when it comes to being devious or doing mischievous things, we remember the form for the first time we taught and we never need to be taught again for the rest of our lives. We never forget how to play poker or playing games. We never forget how to shuffle a deck of cards. The real reason behind paying homage areas follows. 1. To give us a firm connection that the virtues of that person, connecting up our thoughts with a person of virtue, will elevate our own minds to the higher level of virtue of that person. 2. To practice expressing virtues so that in the future we might have a chance to gain a real appreciation of the virtues of that person. Whether we are an adult or a child, our appreciation of the real depth of virtue does not really do justice to the depth of their virtues. Expressing homage can help us to appreciate it. When we were only five or six years old, and our parents took us to the temple or the church, they would make sure that we paid respect to the Buddha or the Christ image. For the child, he cannot see beyond the clay or the brass of the image and might wonder what all the fuss is all about. A child that is so young can have no appreciation of the real depth of the virtues of the Lord Buddha. Taken to the home of their own uncle, they are told to pay respect to their uncle. The child cannot distinguish the goodness of their uncle's character, but pay respect because he has been told to do so. At school, the child is told to pay respect to their teachers. The child might not be able to tell the real virtue of a teacher because the child's ability to comprehend is only limited. However, sometime in the future, when we become so used to expressing our respect that we became used to it, the thought will eventually occur to us to look for the reason. Sometimes people confuse respect with expressing respect. However, if you express respect, when your attitude is wrong, you will not succeed in furthering your spiritual progress. Consider the following example. 1. Bowing out of obsequiousness. Some people bow just because everyone else does. Usually, they bow reluctantly. They have no attitude of respect in their mind. Therefore, all they get for their effort is a stiff feeling in their muscle. 2. Bowing out of peer pressure. Someone only show respect in order to please the person they pay respect to, so that they can ask favors from that person, often for things which are not entirely honest or noble. 3. Bowing in search of wisdom. This refers to those who have an attitude of respect and who also express their respect with the determination to practice themselves or the virtue exemplified by the object of their respect. An example of the sort of attitude in mind of someone who benefits from expressing respect is supposing we bow three times to express respect toward the Buddha. 1. When we bow the first time, to reflect on the supreme wisdom of the Buddha which allow him to see existence of suffering, know the origin and the cessation of suffering and find the path to the cessation of suffering. Wisdom arrived from the Buddha's extended meditation mind until his mind had become sufficiently clear and bright to eradicate all defilements of the mind. Following his example, we should also meditate until we can achieve the same wisdom as that of the Buddha. 2. When we bow the second time, we reflect on the supreme compassion of the Lord Buddha that instead of just keeping his wisdom to himself, he spent all his life teaching Dharma to others so that they could become enlightened in his footsteps. Following his example, we should also find ways of being generous as a way of expressing our compassion to others. 3. When we bow the third time to reflect on the supreme purity of the body, speech and mind of the Lord Buddha, 
cultivated through his extended practice of self-discipline. Following his example, we should also find ways of finding better ways to extend our own self-discipline so that we too can attain full purity of mind. True source of respect. However, all four of these can be summarized under just two headings, that is, homage through gift. These refer to all material forms of paying homage, whether it can be putting palms together in a gesture of respect or even speaking words of praise about a person. Two, homage through practice. This means paying homage by doing as one is taught. For example, we pay respect to the Lord Buddha by doing as he taught. Thus, in practice, expressing respect has two major components. Relative importance. When we pay respect to the Lord Buddha, we should emphasize homage through practice, while homage to gift should play only a supporting role. As for paying respect to teachers who are still concerned with worldly matters, such as parents, teachers, elders, and boss, we have to emphasize homage through gifts, while homage through practice play only a supporting role. To give an example, if we are to meet with our teacher and when we meet up with them, all we have for them is the words, I have put into practice everything you have taught me. This would hardly impress the teacher. It would have appropriate to have some sort of gift to give the teacher as well. Others go aboard and on the way back think of their teacher. They don't know what to get as a present for the teacher and so they get a bottle of liquor. In the end, the result is that the teacher and the pupil sit down and drink liquor together. The more they drink, the more irritated they feel and end up fighting one another. When it gets to this point, that gift can hardly be count as a token of respect anymore. It is an unwelcome gift resulting from false will. And so everyone, now we have learned expressing respect and its purpose to those who are worthy of our respect. We will continue again in the next episode of identifying the person who is worthy of our respect. So stay tuned in our next podcast. See you again next time.